Hey everyone, well, welcome back. You know when you go to Tractor Supply and there's those tractors with the huge tires sitting by the registers that you always want to buy but really don't have a need for them? Hi, I'm Tony Fastadder. I'm Tony Fastadder. I'm Tony Fastadder. My family's been blessed to farm in Montana for over 100 years now. And it wouldn't be possible without the great team we have and blessings from our Savior Jesus Christ. Scott is here from Titan Tire. You know, I was heading up to Minneapolis, I took a left, and all of a sudden I ended up here in Montana, of all places. Yeah, that's kind of weird. <laughs> it's like you've been here before. I know, I now. know, a long <laughs> way away. So, we're going to do a conversion from a 650 tires to 800. Yep, you're going to go from a 650, 65, 38 R1W tire to our new LSW 855R46 Optitorque, which is actually an R1. So the treads will show a little bit, but the treads are a little bit shallower, a little bit wider, because you don't need that real deep, aggressive tread when you're spraying. All it's doing is yeah. creating a deeper lug rut. And that would probably be a little safer and a little you know, gentler on the crop Absolutely. as well, too. Absolutely. So. Soft as a, as a baby's. Well, you know what. So. <laughs> and the diameters are taller. The new tires are quite a bit taller than the old ones. Yep, these are sitting at about 72, 73 inches, and uh, uh, 800 is about 82 inches tall. So you're going to gain a little bit of height, a little bit of clearance, and a heck of a lot more flotation yep and that that uh, crop is gonna get laid down a it's little been, more gentler yep. rather than sharper too yep that's so. what they do is they roll it over because they'll come right back light footprint very light footprint and i had a few people comment about a 1600 gallon tank you're gonna be out of tires well then i started doing some math on what these tires are rated for and we were right yep right at the limit anyways and these are almost double what the old tires yep. were for capacity. Yep. I think, what are they, 17,000 mm -hmm. capacity? 17, and these are 10, 7 or yep. something. And at a much lower inflation pressure. Yeah, So, so and the ride should be better. Yep, and, and we'll get you, you know what, I got Michael, uh, my egg specialist here out in this area, and we're gonna, once we get you converted over, get you up on the scales, we'll get you weighed up, and then we'll get you all tuned up, and you'll be- Get the pressures right. Get your pressures you right where they're gonna be, so. Cool. I think we got a little wager going on uh, what those are actually gonna be, there so. So what's, uh, what are you gonna win if you're right? Uh, you're buying lunch, I thought. Well, I am making lunch. I already made oh, lunch. Oh, well then. I'll have That's to already... Uh, gosh, I got took on that one. <laughs> no, but it, well, it'll be fun. And, and like I said, it's, it's a learning experience. And like I said, you know, Michael, I got four other guys that uh, that's all they do is come out here and, you know, get people uh, scaled up, set their inflations, make sure everything's sure. running right. You know, got to reduce that compaction and, and tire life. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. Sounds good. Let's get at it, man. Good work. Woo! You think we could just get by with running it like that? I don't know. It looks cool that way. A little, it's, little stamps to it, doesn't it? The 70s call and they want their spray back. <laughs> <laughs> Michael along for this is not only for his good looks and chiseled good looks but <laughs> no he's uh he, so what he's got here is he's got two scales on the ground he's got a handheld that reads actually reads that weight so we got the weight on the front axle we pulled him up on the rear axle we got the weight with the booms folded yep. and with the not uh opened up so this is worst case scenario with your booms out because all that's way on the back so yep. that's what we got to we kind of got to know those numbers so we're just trying to figure out how much air pressure to put in these Correct. tires. Correct. So once we figure out what the actual axle loads are, then we can set those inflation pressures sure. to get just, like I said, the maximum footprint to reduce that compaction. Yeah. 
You guys see this blue stuff in the sky? What's that? <laughs> if it starts raining while we're here, we're tying you up in the shop. You can't go back to Iowa. I got my bags packed. There you go. We're good. We'll wash your jacket that's all full of tire goobers. We'll be good, huh? <laughs> Tires come shipped with about 45, 46 PSI in them, so now they're gonna let them out. Well, we just got done with our uh, hot lap around the field and down the road, and ride quality is great. Picked up a couple mile an hour road speed even, so. Faster. Get there a little quicker Faster is better, right? Yeah. That's why they call so, it fast ag. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I like it, good improvement. Yeah, and you know, this is, this is special. This tire is actually designed for spray application. And like we were talking earlier, uh, it, the lugs are a little bit wider. It's not an R1W, which is like 20% deeper tread. The tires we had on here before are actually a, a rear tire to a mechanical front wheel drive tractor. So it's an sure. R1W, it's a little bit deeper. This is a shallower tread, a wider tread, and we've got also got a little bit larger nose on it. So when you're roading, you got more footprint and more lug on the ground for wearing and, and lug cracking, all those things that happen with the sprayer. And then um, we've got a, a little bit more of a rounded shoulder than our, our standard Optitrack tire. So, uh, this is going to be as stealthy in the field as you possibly can get. Top line, this is where it's at, LSW's. And then we got Michael, uh, we went in and weighed things up. Uh, what do we end up setting those yep. up? We set the uh, fronts up at uh, 17 and the rear at 20 PSI. We did that with the booms for the rear uh, open and the front, we closed them up for uh, total weight. Uh, worst case scenario, we always and what did this go, what, you, what, did, what did this come in at? It came in at about 49,000 pounds. And that would be loaded. loaded. Full. Yeah, if yeah. we're loaded with water. That would be loaded, yeah. so. Yeah, you're ready to go, man. And that was 1,600 gallons of water, not 1,200. That was 1,600. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks, guys. Yeah, well, Absolutely. thanks for having us out here. Thank and you. Getting it all set up 100% where we know and. Yep. Yep. Otherwise, and, if you're looking. You know, and, and like we were talking before, you know, Michael's our ag specialist, so we've got you know, for other guys like him running around the country. So if somebody needs LSW set up or any Goodyear farm tire set up, get a hold of us and we'll get somebody out and, and do exactly what we did yep. with you today. So Sounds good. Yep. Well, cool, should we go look at an air cart? Absolutely. Let's go, Let's go do it. Yeah. Well, if I were a betting man, I'd say nobody else builds farm tires but Goodyear. Well, I know, right? As far as the eye can see. I mean, this thing's got its own area code, too, and <laughs> there's a Goodyear tire on every corner of it. There you go. Yeah. Every block of town, Goodyear tire. Exactly. So this is a little different profile and size than what we just mounted yep. on the uh, This is an 850-75 R42. It's an IF technology, meaning you can run 20% less inflation pressure okay. than the standard tire. A VF tire is 40% less inflation. What that does, we're allowing that tire to run at a lower inflation pressure so it squats more, basically, and that footprint gets longer, and then that's where you get the larger footprint, less ground bearing pressure, less compression. And that's important because we're coming behind. Yep. All of our seed is planted, and we want something soft back here that we don't don't overpack and cause an issue with the emergence of a seed. Yep, exactly. So you've got big 710, 70R42s, which is a large tire in itself, but then you've got these, uh, this 850, 7542 rear, which at one time held the record as the largest act tire in the world. So if you can believe that. The tallest? The just... tallest, well, biggest, it was a group 49. So yeah, okay. it was a big, big, or excuse me, a group 50. It's sure. about 90 inches tall, that tire is. Yeah, it's a... It's a big fella. It's, it's, it's a big fella. It's a big fella. When we mounted that, we had a hard time grabbing it with the skid steer attachment, not the tires. It was because 
So just to probably not mess you might be able, there. you know what, you might be able to get your arms on the I don't know about of, that. Of that, but uh, it'd be seven foot tall to have that wingspan. <laughs> no, this is a uh, this would be fun to see this thing get going. That's, yeah. Wow. You stick around the rest of the week, you could do that. I, maybe I could. I got nothing else going on. <laughs> you know, we drive for how long to get here, and it's still windy. What does that mean? I know. I hope it pushes it back home. Yeah. <laughs> Hope it does too. Well, let's go look at the drill tires. What's all the different? There's a, there's a lot of different tires on this thing. There is. This one is pretty well riddled with our FS24 uh, radial implement line. That's the, our Goodyear radial implement line. So we got a, like I said, we got a 380, 55, 16, 5 there. We got a 500, uh, 40, 16, 5 down there. So uh, kind of dog from every town when it comes to that. But again, uh, all radial on here so again radial you can run lower inflation pressures than yep. a typical bias tire so that's good for compaction and and uh, reduction of the compaction and increase in the footprint size so yep. um, there are a lot of tires on this thing uh, you know people may wonder why you have a like a, a bar tire on like this um and you notice it's backwards right yep. we're going this way but why do they do that well it actually it, it helps to roll it rolls easier that way okay uh going into the so it's not really pushing the dirt right. ahead of it it's right um and then also it's gripping and turning so as it turns that means it'll actually cast her easier oh sure so you're not just Less you know like a, instead way. of just sitting there mushing around if you're making a turn maybe in some wetter conditions yep. it'll actually be turning and actually spinning it's not dragging sure. it, so. there you go that's where they're backwards uh, somebody's gonna ask yeah they they will ask <laughs> exactly and they get you they noticed maybe they didn't notice that it was backwards on the cart too you know what would look cooler pulling this and we talked about it earlier is maybe a red machine but with a really big well, bring me one. We'll try it. All right. All right. Do that. Someday, maybe. Maybe someday. Maybe, maybe get that ready for the fall. We'll put some winter weed in with uh, the tires instead of tracks. We could try that. That'd be a fun demo, wouldn't it? Yeah. Absolutely. It's going to take us a day to put the monitor in that. Another <laughs> tractor is a problem. <laughs> thanks for coming out. Well, Getting again, thanks for uh, inviting us out. And I'm glad we got that taken care of on the sprayer and get you set up here. And I love oh, Montana. We should talk a little bit about weighing. We weighed the cart. Yep. It was within a thousand pounds of what Brigo says on their literature of the weight as commonly equipped, which we might have the bulk boom might not be taken. We might be under 50% or right, whatever rate, right. take rate on that. We so. were, you know, threw our scales down, just like we did on your sprayer. We threw the scales down, rolled it up, and then doing some crude doing math, some, doing figuring some, out you know, and, some gazintas, and yeah. uh, got it to you know, t to where we thought it would be. And actually really close to very close, very close yep. to recommendation. So, and we do work, you know, closely with Burgo sure. uh, on when they're developing this stuff. Now, yep. thank you, Tony, appreciate yeah. it. Montana, love getting out here. Well, the PDI is all done. The drill is ready to leave the dealership and head home. And we'll finish doing a little bit of setup stuff and putting the drill in the ground there. Figure out how to steer it. The back uh, two tire sets of casters on each side for the drill swing so I can swing the back of this drill around and make corners and everything so well we were about oh, I don't know eight ten miles out of town got on some back roads here we got to jump down hit the highway for a few miles get across the creek but uh, it's going good this thing really corners well it actually probably makes corners better than our seat master does because it swings the cart around well we didn't make it all the way home we had a uh, brake dragging a little bit you hear it squeaking so you got that adjusted, but now it's dark. So we'll come back in the morning, get that taken the rest of the way to the farm. Well, we're back to moving the drill this morning. It was trying to snow out a little bit. There is one there we can stop and check those brakes like that. Yeah, probably where the highway turns back north, so see from both directions.
Well, we came back to the shop here. We weren't sure if how muddy the roads were gonna be moving that drill, so we parked at the bins. Came back here, got the sprayer in the shop here. We need to get those fenders on yet. Do a few other things to that to get it ready for uh, the spring. Also doing some cool and flush stuff on the uh, tractor. We did run some uh, dishwashing detergent through it yesterday. Let it run for about half hour, 45 minutes, somewhere in there. Just ran some fresh water through it. It's still a little bit dirty looking, so we're gonna run some more uh, Cascade, whatever, Power Max, whatever they call it stuff. No, that's Roundup. Cascade, I don't know. Some more dishwashing detergent through that. One more time, then flush that back out. Fresh water a few times, then put coolant back in it, put the additive in it. And that's it for that tractor, I think. Well, front duels at some point. We'll get those on, but uh, then I think we'll head over and get the drill brought home. The roads were a little bit of water sitting on them in some spots, not much moisture, but it's been windy since then. So this should be dried off by the time we get the drill going again. Well, we're getting a lot cleaner water. Just finished draining the radiator back out. It smells like fresh dishes. So must be getting better than anifree smell. Drain this one more time and uh, do a more, two more fresh water rinses and then I think we're ready to put coolant back in it. That looks pretty clear to me. Last, uh, probably do one more flush. Finally, it's a long process. Let that thing cool off between every time you you run it because you don't want to crack the block with putting cold air back, cold water, not air, back into that engine when it's hot. So we pulled off the heater hose going to the cab for the heater core, run some air through that. We'll let this drain. I think we'll go get the air drill now. Well, we're going down a pretty good hill here down into the creek bottom. This is my uh, trailer brake system, kind of like on a boat trailer or whatever, but this is the cart brakes and the back axle. If I throttle back and hit my brakes, there, that uh, yellow indicates the trailer brakes being applied. So that's kind of handy for going down hills like this. I know it's hard to tell how steep this is. But there the car brakes came on. Keep it from pushing at all. Kind of leveling off here a little bit, so we can pick a gear. And then I gotta get a 21 foot car through a 24 foot bridge. Made it, I think. Dad didn't flake me to stop anyways. Well, we're just getting home here, and uh, it's a pretty tight corner into the yard, especially with the seat master drills. We always ran the cart up onto our lawn a little bit. So, the drill monitor has steering that I can hydraulically control the back of the drill to swing it around the corners. Well, the drill is home. That's a good feeling. A few of those hills, I was a little curious on how that was gonna work going down and coming up and everything was good. I did do a quick rinse to the pressure washer to get all the, got a little mud on it from the road. Some spots was wet from the rain and snow today as well as that highway. I'm pretty sure it still had a bunch of mess on that from winter chloride and whatever they spray on the road. So that's done. Dad did the final flush out on the, uh, through the 370, I think I thought it was for a second. And that thing's ready for coolant in the morning. And don't forget, farm hard, pray harder. We'll see you next video. I need better lights in here.